Introduction to Radioactive Decay Processes. This video will be a brief overview of all the decay processes that we're going to be talking about. There's a small video on each individual decay process, but I think it's good to have a little bit of an overview before going into the minutia. After going into each one individually, we'll then have a kind of wrap-up podcast as well that talks about them as a group once more. So here we'll just introduce the concept of radioactive decay and identify all the particles that are frequently discussed in nuclear chemistry. A radioactive decay process is one in which a nuclei decays and become two particles or a particle and energy. Notice this is different than any sort of chemical reaction that we've done all year because it says a nuclei decays we are actually decaying a nucleus. We are changing something about the nucleus itself. These are generally spontaneous and measured in half-lifes. Each radioactive nuclei will decay at a specific time. And we can measure how much a, let's say, gram of the radioactive material will decay in a certain amount of time. That's a half-life. But an individual particle, we actually will never know when that particle will decay. At some point in time, it will just suddenly happen. And some nuclei decay faster than others, and so they would have a shorter half-life. In other words, half of their material will decay at a much faster rate than something with a longer half-life. But that doesn't allow us to guess about one individual particle. It's a statistical situation. All our radioactive decay processes are going to follow first order kinetics, and we'll be going over that at a later time too. And we'll discuss five main types here. Let's first go over the various sorts of particles that we'll be talking about. We have an alpha particle, and each of these have different symbols that we'll talk about on the front uh, in the next slide. It has a mass of four, and this is effectively a helium atom. We're just going to use it as we're just going to use the name alpha particle from time to time when we're talking about radioactive decay because this will actually be ejected from the nucleus itself at times. We also have an electron. And if you look at this, you can see that the mass number is zero. The charge is a negative one. And so in most ways, this is the normal electron that you are used to seeing. However, in this case, we're going to be talking about this coming from the nucleus as in we have a negative charge packet coming from the nucleus rather than coming from the surrounding energy levels. And so often when we're talking about that, we'll want to call it a beta particle instead of an electron. Just like an electron is a negative charge packet that will come from the nucleus in this case, we also have something called a positron. And a positron is similar in the fact that it has zero mass unit and this one has a plus one charge though. Maybe even add a little plus here just to make that extra sure that you know that that's a plus one charge. So sometimes people seem to get a little extra confused by positron versus electron or beta particle because we're used to talking about electrons. We're not used to talking about positrons, but the concept is very, very similar. It's something with a very, very small mass, much less than one. You can see that here but one has a negative charge and one has a positive charge. We also have protons that can be ejected or come off. And those are the same protons that you're used to always talking about, a mass unit of one, so a charge of one. And then we have a neutron, which is also the same thing that you're used to talking about. It has a mass unit of one and a charge of zero. We have one last thing, and it's not really a particle per se, but it's called gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is an amount of high, or high energy that can come off from decay processes, usually after another decay process has happened. There's no mass here. See, zero mass. It is just radiation, just energy. And we'll talk about that more when we cover gamma emission. There are some other symbols that we use for this, so I thought that I would show you this just for a few different types of notation that we can use. With our alpha particle, we can denote it as helium, or this is not this was not how I did on the other slide, so pay attention to that. Or you can actually just list it as alpha too. You don't have to use the four, two superscript and subscript. Beta similarly has several different symbols that we can use. We can use the electron symbol that I showed you on the other page, or we can actually put a beta symbol in there. 
You're also welcome to just use beta. However, you must put the negative sign right here. And that's because you need to make sure that you denote that it is not a positron like we have here. So for positrons, you can similarly use the nomenclature where you're working off what we did for electrons, or you can put the beta in, or you can just use a beta plus. For gamma radiation, I'll be honest, even though I showed this table with it listed like this, I've almost always just seen it listed without the mass or charge unit because everybody knows that it doesn't have mass or charge. Now let's cover each of the radioactive decay processes that we'll be covering in greater detail later on, just as a quick overview. We'll talk about alpha emission, which, as you may guess, emits an alpha particle. Beta particle emission, where it is emitting a beta particle or an electron. Positron emission, where it emits a positron. Gamma emission, where it emits gamma radiation. Or electron capture, where you're actually taking an electron from the surrounding orbitals and pulling it into the nucleus. There's a few different ways that this can happen. Making the nuclei overall less positive because you've added this negative charge to it. So we'll talk about that as well. So as a quick review, there's lots of different types of radioactive decay processes. We're going to explicitly talk about five, and in the coming videos, we'll focus on each one of these individually. Many of the atomic particles have many ways of noting them. You can pick your favorite and stick with it. However, you should be able to recognize the other ones in case I use it as well.